Hello friends, welcome back to this video series on saluting women in history. Odisha was famous as Kalinga, Utkala, Kosala etc. during ancient days. Its geographical location played a vital role in the cultural fusion of the north and south. The history of Odisha in the 8th century AD marked the emergence of a powerful dynasty named as Bhamakaras. The Bhaumas ruled for nearly two centuries and established a vast kingdom known as Tozali. From the available copper plate grants, we come to know that female members of the Bhauma family ruled over Odisha. They were the non-Aryan tribe with roots from Odisha. The women of this tribe enjoyed great freedom. They were trained in warfare as well. Over the 200 years that the dynasty reigned, six queens sat on the throne and other powerful queens were influential consorts of kings. These queens acted independently in their own right. They were not acting as regents for male rulers unlike other dynasties. Of the six queens, five were dowagers, that is the widows of previous kings and one was an unmarried princess. A striking feature was that None of them adopted a son to succeed them. All were not only highly educated and cultured, but were also philanthropists. The queens of the Bamakara dynasty kept up the tradition of commissioning inscriptions on copper plates, a valuable source of information to us today on this important dynasty in Odisha. Here are some unturned pages from the history of ancient Odisha that talk about the unsung heroes of the time. Tiribuana Mahadevi first. She is the first female ruler of this dynasty and ascended the throne in 845 AD under rather unusual circumstances. And it is recorded that initially she was reluctant to rule but was persuaded by the courtiers. With her accession, the political history of Bhamakaras took a new turn. Tiribuana Mahadevi was an efficient administrator who managed to keep her kingdom safe from enemies and came down heavily on rebellion. She took up the title of Parama Vaishnavi. She administered her subjects efficiently by appointing officers of pure character and clean hands. As a powerful ruler, she maintained an army of 30,000 soldiers. Shubhakara Deva force Talcher plate extols her virtues, stating, During her reign, the country advanced in three branches of administration. The foes were annihilated, the glory spread abroad, and there was peace among the people. Tiribuana Mahadevi gave up the throne when her grandson Shubhakara Deva II came of age. Tiribuana Mahadevi II her reign must have been very short since it was disputed by her nephews. She ruled in her own right, although in most other dynasties, the throne would have gone to her husband's nephews. A somewhat singular occurrence recorded in copper plate in Bauth says that she gave grants to a common woman who petitioned that she wanted to build two temples in her father's memory. When Tiribuana Mahadevi II acceded to the woman's request for a grant, she was also investing in the local areas, commerce and arts, boosting its economy. She was succeeded by Gauri Mahadevi, who had an extremely short reign but was able to maintain peace and order in the kingdom. Dandi Mahadevi, she is known to have issued the maximum numbers of copper plate grants. She has been endowed with the sovereign titles as Parama Bhattarika, Maharaja the Raja and Parameshwari. Dandi Mahadevi was a good administrator and was able to be an efficient and powerful ruler. She kept her kingdom free from invasions. The mention of precious gems and pearls in her copper plate grants shows the prosperity of her reign. She was capable to restore the integrity and prosperity of her kingdom. When Dandi Mahadevi died a premature death, she was succeeded by her stepmother Vakula Mahadevi. There is also record of a grant of a village by her as well. Dharma Mahadevi 
she has been described as a female swan in the assembly of kings owing allegiance to her she has been endowed with the royal titles as parama maheshwari parama bhattarika maharaja di raja and parameshwari these high sounding royal titles prove that she enjoyed a full fledged sovereignty besides these reigning queens the other female members like prithvi mahadevi gauri mahadevi and vakula mahadevi played a great role in the political and cultural integration of odisha education is almost always the common point among the women rulers who successfully overcome petty court politics quell the rebellion protect the realm against the invasions and act or excellent administrators who subjects or content and have armies who are willing to die for them as we conclude the right to succession by the female heirs is thus a significant contribution of odisha to the indian polity so from emperor maha mega vahana karavela to queen dandi mahadevi all of them played a vital role for maintaining political unification and cultural integration of ancient odisha further during the early part of the 19th century sumitra devi of mayurbanj was known for her bravery and intelligence while rani sukha devi of banki displayed immense courage in safeguarding her territory the region of odisha had many women poetesses such as madhavi devi brindabadi devi and rani nishankre who through their poems fought against social evils such as child marriage besides sukha devi the queen of bangigar was a legend in the 18th century due to her bravery and magnanimity in the field of warfare which later inspired women of the succeeding generations with all these facts highlighted these women ought to be given a big salute in history thank you very much for watching and i will see you all in the next video with another important topic